Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins, and you have entered the DM Zone. And today we are visiting with the cast of the play Becoming Julia Morgan. And I am now speaking with the lead actor of that play who plays Julia Morgan. I say about Mara Pearl, she is an actor, a producer, an author, and a motivational speaker. Welcome, Mara. Thank you, DM. So <laughs> happy to be here. So great to see you again. It's fun, too, for me. I want to talk about your character, Julia Morgan. What is it that people need to know? Why did you feel people needed to know about Julia Morgan? I think there are trailblazers in this life, and she's one of them. We take for granted certain freedoms, certain um, open doors, but she flung open so many doors for other people. She was just unstoppable. We like to say that she was breaking glass ceilings even as she was building them. <laughs> you know, she just, she had a brain that was math and creativity. And it was sort of a problem in that the only thing open for most young women, and this is the late 1800s. I was going to say, we need to say the time period is. The time yeah. period was marriage. And that was how you got your financial support. And it wasn't expected that you would ha even have a career. I think one of the most important things a person can do is find their special purpose in life. That is something Julia was very good at in a time where it was very unusual to be good at that. Now, there are many speakers, there are many books about finding your core purpose. Yeah. I give a program called May the Core Be With You. you know, I like she, that. Yeah, but she was early in this and she went to visit her cousin Pierre who said, you know, Julia, since you love math and you love creativity, the best career for you is architecture. And I know from my research, she was looking for a career in spite of her parents saying, time for debutante ball, time to find the hubby. Well, and according to this play, the parents argued about it. The father, I think, worried about her place in society, felt that she should come out as a debutante. But her mother said, you know, she really wants to study. Let's support her studies instead. So she becomes the first woman to graduate in engineering at UC California, Berkeley. So that's one of the trailblazing things. And then when she was in Paris, she had difficulty getting accepted and entered. It took her two years to enter their art program. Yes, L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts is and was a very famous school for arts and architecture. There weren't any women students in the architecture program, but her mentor, Bernard Maybeck, suggested that it was his alma mater, it was also her cousin's alma mater, and that she should go because the school had said, at least theoretically, that they were prepared to accept women. Once she gets there, there was actually quite a bit of subterfuge to try to prevent her from passing the exam. It kind of makes you remember Julia Child, her, her struggle to become a chef because they wanted to teach her how to boil eggs. I know. I think maybe that's the problem. If your name is Julia, you can't get into school in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, but there is a very much of a parallel. So Julia Morgan finally gets that piece of paper, and Maybeck is friends with Phoebe Apperton Hurst, William Randolph's mother. Now, Phoebe was a mar marvelous woman and a big philanthropist, and she sat on the board of the YWCA. So interestingly, there was a movement of young women coming to the cities to work, but there was no proper place for them to live. And the board of the YWCA saw this as a big problem. She hires Julia right out of school, so proud of her with her, she's a California girl just like Phoebe is, and hires her to start designing the YWCA's. And to this day, the reason the Y's have big swimming pools larger bathrooms, counter space, cozy places to sit and visit is because of Julia Morgan. In other words, she set out the plan, the, the roadmap, so to speak, for that architecture to continue forward to this day. Yeah, and then some of those places have gone on now to become conference centers like Asilomar. Um, fascinating what a lasting impact her work really has had. Yeah, and we talk about that association with the Hearst 
and with William Hurst, but it started with Phoebe, his mother. It did, yes. And then when she passes on, I think Hurst was waiting to have the opportunity to work with her himself. And I believe they had a most unusual friendship. They worked together on that Hearst Castle for 28 years. And my mother's favorite place to visit. <laughs> oh, it's so spectacular, and it's sort of endless, you know. You can get lost up there. There are multiple tours. Of course, we want to do the play there, which we think would be very much enjoyed by people who visit. Yeah, the Hearst Castle, when you look at her taste, she never got around to building a house for herself. It wasn't important. Her thing was to realize the dreams of other people. That's what her passion was. So she had a little lean-to shack, which was her office at the Hearst Castle. But she had no problem building this elaborate, you know, Spanish Renaissance. Well, the, the building that we're in today, where we're looking, and this is a, 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 a basically a cemetery, but she has done this incredible building. This place absolutely floored all of us when we came up here to first visit. It is, in a way you could say, an expression of infinitude. And she was in inspired by the golden ratio, which is this special element of math where, as inside a Nautilus chamber, each chamber is the same degree larger than the previous chamber. And there's no end to the formula that describes the golden ratio. Well, when you walk through these multiple spaces, they reveal themselves to you. You say, ooh, I have to go up those stairs. But when you get there, you look to the left and, oh, here's a, a garden with a fountain. And then you turn to the right and, oh, here's a little tiny meditation chapel. And it goes on and on. And she worked on this, Chapel of the Chimes, concurrently with working on the Hearst Castle. About 25 years on this on, on this, this right. right, and and meanwhile, 700 buildings. So, I mean, maybe she's one of those people who really never slept. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how she did it. But it was her passion, her love, her heart was in it, and so was her mind. And I will tell you, the more I researched her, all of her important decisions were basically guided by women. First, men were in there, but the woman was the first one. So that's kind of neat, a woman guiding another woman. It is, and I think that mentorship meant a lot to her. And I have to mention Belinda Taylor, our playwright. She herself was a journalist, a professional journalist with the Oakland Tribune, I believe it was, for many years. She wrote this play. She must have done enough research to do a PhD dissertation. <laughs> She's so knowledgeable. But she cleverly figures out, now, why isn't there more written about Julia Morgan? And she hypothesizes that there was a biographer who really wanted to do the book, but then something happens, and it's a spoiler alert, so I won't. No, 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 don't say it. Don't say. But it's so clever in a way the Jerry Mack character, who is the really very important character who's sort of deciphering the code of Julia Morgan, I think he is based on Belinda, our playwright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and again, what we talk about, the importance over 700 buildings have been created, designed by Julia Morgan. Yeah. And you would think that there would be more about her. So uh, becoming Julia Morgan, the play, is so exciting. It is so exciting. It's a piece of California history. I think it's important in that way. It's a piece of women's history. It's important in that way. It's a piece of architectural history. So these things converge. And honestly, I admit I didn't know that much about her before we started doing this play. And now I feel I've seen the light and I really want to share this with others. I have to agree with you. That's been my research and my, my journey as well. So that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> Stay right there. And you have been in the DM zone. Come back soon. <laughs>